Don't try to understand it. Feel it. I'm going to start this one like Rogan. Hey, Andrew Pressure, how you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way he does it. He just, just, he just like, oh, we're just suddenly in a conversation. Oh yeah, man. Uh, so what about my quote? I ordered my hot sauce an hour ago. Yeah, I, people don't care whether they hear your quote or not because you never make reference to why you're doing it in the first place. At least mine's at the top of the show. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I'm just, just spouting words, just to spout words. It, it starts the motor. I, I, as you can see, it didn't do that well today. You should do. <laughs> you should do it like a, a gold member does when he quotes. Then then he says who the quotes by under his breath. John David Washington. Let's say say the quote over again. I want to hear it. And then and then say and then give credit where it's due. I ordered my hot sauce an hour ago. John David Washington. Yeah. But- have you ever seen Gold Member? Jesus. I well, oh, shit. I, Obviously, we're talking about Tenet today. If you've clicked on this episode, Andy, I'm talking to you. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm ready. You click on these episodes all the time after you get your ass handed to you. <laughs> um, you want to go through that painful experience twice, don't you? Of course. And then it's like, all right, what am I going to do next week? And then it all goes out the window. So back to movie theaters. We both had the opportunity to go back to a movie theater for the first time I, I cannot find a record of me seeing a movie in theaters in 2020 because either Fandango or Cinemark, uh, they wiped their database. I'm sure I have seen a movie in 2020, but the last movie on record that I have that I've been in a theater for, if my if my phone is correct, is Star Wars. Wow. Yeah. In December. Yeah, I'm. Sure I you know I should have looked it up before the podcast, but I can't remember because it was. But it was Oscar season, so we had a lot of screeners. For yeah, we didn't go out because we had Jen. everything at home, like we always do every year. So the first opportunity to go back to see a movie, it had to be Tenet. Oh, of course, it's a large action scale Christopher Nolan adventure, and Christopher Nolan is one of the last true pioneers of the big, big scale movies that uses less effects and more realistic. Um, stunts and stunt drivers and real planes getting blown up. <laughs> <Right>. And uh, <laughs> and he shoots on film. He shoots on 70 millimeter IMAX film. So that's uh, that's why I have to see this this kind of movie in the biggest theater possible. Uh, I went to see at our local uh, IMAX here in uh, the East Bay. I think you saw it at the same place. Yeah, I did just different times. It was a trip being back. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, the mask, I was never really unaware that I was wearing it for the whole film. Um, I don't particularly like uh, smelling my own breath the whole time, yeah. even though my breath is minty fresh. <laughs> I was burping up some stuff. Oh, I'll bet. Sour Jacks and whatever popcorn <laughs> butter that you could do shots of before you got in. The, you, you just went crazy because you finally got back into the theater with all the concessions. Oh, yeah. It was half off. So it's like, dude, shots of butter all around for the whole place. <laughs> you just stop by every single day, no matter what, because it's half off. You don't even have a ticket. You just go in and you buy some <laughs> fucking Cinnabons. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had a movie theater hot dog? Oh, it's been a long time. I've oh. had I've had everything. Movie theater pizza, movie theater nachos, movie theater hot dog, all the candies, all Film the popcorn. slob. Film slob. All the Gilbert Godfrey, he was, he was very correct. He's like, yeah, what do you do? Just fart in the theater the whole time? Yeah. No, you do that after, yeah, after you eat a movie theater pizza. What the hell is wrong with you? Uh, you know, I uh, I was hungry, I guess. Movie that was what's wrong pizza? with me. Yeah, it was Oh, my good. God. I had I mean, ice cream, coffee. What? It's not. A, you're not going to a restaurant. <laughs> you're going to a movie. Unless it's Alamo Draft House, which then I can't excuse. But what the hell? This is just Cinemark. Yeah, it's just the... You know how long those hot dogs have been sitting there? Uh, that's why I didn't get one this time. They've, been, they've <laughs> been sitting there since COVID started. Those are the same concession items. And I did think that when I got some popcorn. I went, this popcorn has probably been sitting here since March. <laughs> right. Just and it was like, it. It, yeah, then they don't they don't slather it with butter like they used to. No. They should, they should have their own butter receptacle for people like you. <laughs> yeah, just put my face Not underneath me. it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, back to the theaters. It was it the movie Tenet, Christopher Nolan's new movie. Definitely lived up to the to the hype inside my mind where it's a movie, I'll, it, I'll defend it still, it needs to be seen in a theater, it needed to be released in theaters. This was in no way a movie that would be as visually stunning and entertaining entertaining if I saw this at home. Oh, for sure. And it, you, thankfully, you told me right before I was buying my tickets, like, go see it on the biggest screen you can, just yeah. to be immersed in that world. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's full of action. It's full of some of the most beautiful visuals of this year. Uh, Nolan definitely knows what he's doing as a director. He likes to film realistic worlds um, with fantastic plots. 
And by fantastic, I mean fantasy. Not that I like all of his uh, all of his movies. I do enjoy them because I really enjoy him, and I love what he's doing for film. But um, you know, it's it's kind of weird. I there, there's certain films I love of his. Memento is probably. It's up there as one of my favorites. I think Dunkirk probably is my favorite film that he's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tarantino recently came out and said that it was the it's the best movie of the past ten or twenty years. Number one, I think. But wow. he also said that about the Social Network. So, um, well, two you know two different movies. Yeah, <laughs> two different subject matters. Love them both. Um, but the the scale of Nolan is what I enjoy the most. I just love that somebody still gives this guy enough money and says just go out there and film the movie your way, and he does it on. It's like if it's like. Like a mil- like military spending. If only the military would spend money on movies. <laughs> right. You know, they, they would look like Christopher Nolan movies because th- just from the sheer scale of it, you're impressed while you're watching Tenet. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you're in it, man. It's every you one of his movies. You saying that? Well, that's, what, that's, that's why I love this why I, Nolan. I don't even know if we did an Inception podcast, but I, I'm, I don't think we did. And I'm glad because... To hear it, the movie, this movie's about time travel and physics, and to to have you explain this to me like you're not a stoner is going to be really, really hard. Oh, okay. Is but it? you know, I, I was working this out in therapy last week. Just let catastrophes happen and stop trying to control them. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad though, <laughs> that this is one of them. Hey, man. Yeah, you come up in my therapy sessions. We, I'm Say the, what? I'm the catastrophe, or just in general? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're definitely the catastrophe every Monday at 5 p.m. Oh, I know, man. And we're going to have to talk philosophy and what this movie is really about. But I, I first want to just talk about why I like the movie um, and not about, not what it's about yet. Uh, movies about time travel have to be insanely smart now because of how many movies about time travel there have been. And my favorite movie about time travel is probably like everybody else, Back to the Future. Oh, of course. You know, the original. Uh, not number one, as Andy would put it. Back <laughs> to the Future one. That's what he calls it. I love it. Uh, as, Why? If, as if there's a colon somewhere. You knew what I'm talking about. Yeah, but it's incorrect, and it's it it makes you just look like, look like a moron and a pedestrian. Okay, fair enough. Plebeian. You want more p words? There's no. one. There's the one that you won't like. <laughs> Neither will a <the> female audience. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, time travel movies have to be smart, and Nolan outsmarts I think even himself these days, <laughs> because. You know, there's no, there's always been an element of time travel in pretty much everything he's done, whether it's linear time travel or actual time travel uh, through through dreams, through uh, in this one actual time. Yeah. <laughs> um, even a memento, you go, he goes, you know, he kind of has a character that deals with living with memories that he doesn't remember, and that even to me is kind of that movie is kind of about time traveling. Yeah, of course. Um, so it's no, it wouldn't shock anybody at this point. To say, like, you know how Tarantino, everybody looks at, like, graphic violence in a movie and they go, well, that's very Tarantino, that movie was. And, like, a like weird time physics is Nolan, I think, now. Yeah, for sure. The I, Prestige, too, right? Wasn't yeah, that time yeah. travel and Tesla and all that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know, alternate realities maybe in that or, yeah, it, it has it always has to do with some kind of quantum, quantum physics. And to to write about it, as he does usually with his brother... You have to be insanely well read and smart about what you're putting out there, and also have access to you know f- you know people that work in the industry. So you know if you're I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily write a police drama without ever talking to a cop. Yeah, right. So I'd probably <laughs> if you're if you're writing Interstellar, I'd probably grab Neil deGrasse Tyson or some astrophysicist. Right. Just 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 like is it cool? <laughs> is it all right to say that the movie is uh, is smart? Uh, I have no idea because I'm not a f- fucking astrophysicist. <laughs> um, is the movie plausible? I don't know. I'm not an astrophysicist. Um, is it possible? I don't know. But I never doubted it for a second because in the first scene, not only does one of the characters say, don't try to understand it. I feel like that was a little wink at the audience. Yeah, right. You know, it, it was like, don't try to understand this movie. Feel it. Feel the movie. And I think that that's pretty much... Before that line was even spoken, that's what I did. I went, Nolan's got me, and I probably won't understand this because he's insanely well read about uh, quantum physics. Yeah. So how about I just let it like a warm blanket take me over? I'll sit in my seat and I will enjoy the next two hours and thirty minutes. And for the most part, I did. I thought it was a very entertaining movie. Oh, yeah. It didn't really ask too much of you, you know, to believe in or you know, in 
you just knew that he probably did his research on this, so it's not too far fetched. Yeah, you're just trying to fit, you're trying to watch the universe as it is prevent, presented in front of you, and it's insanely creative. I mean, that's that's my favorite part about the film. It's it's extremely well thought out and it's methodical down to every last detail when it comes to what you're seeing on the frame, to the performances, to, uh, of course, where it all originates, which is the script. He's a very intelligent, creative script writer, him and his brother. Um, so you don't you don't have much downtime because he's also mixing all that creativity with action that rivals, you know, some of the better James Bond movies being made now, especially any, I would say it rivals most action movies today, oh, yeah. uh, whether you're comparing them to James Bond or, you know, the Avengers or Marvel movies. But you can't compare because he uses so many practical effects and real things, you know? Well, I mean, they use real Mark Ruffalo. That's true. I love Mark Ruffalo. I know you do because you hate fracking. Yes, I do. That's the number one issue <laughs> with you and, and you hate fracking. And that's your favorite part about the Avengers because you hate fracking. <laughs> yes, exactly. And they used Mark Ruffalo and he hates fracking too. <laughs> yeah. Fracking allies, anti-fracking allies. I'm going to make a t-shirt. Um, the superb acting though definitely takes its hat off. I'm going to say it's a tie between Kenneth Branagh and Robert Pattinson in this movie. I love them both equally. I know you're not a big Pattinson fan, but he keeps making movies. And we just did that movie. What? Don't uh, don't tell the mom the babysitter's dead. No, <laughs> the devil all the time. Yeah, yeah, that movie where I said like this kid is getting so good, and he can even do an, a big action movie blockbuster like Tenet, and he brings another new accent. And it's like this sort of like David Niven, old British accent. He pulls it off. You feel for him. You don't trust him. You watch him the whole time and you go, this was the kid from Twilight. Dude, this He's is, doing so well. The, he was my he was my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> it's as strange as that sounds coming out of my mouth. He was my favorite part of the movie. Kenneth Brownell and, uh, uh, and Washington were both good, but like. Pattinson was just the star. I was like, okay, like I I watched The Devil all the time after we did the podcast, but I was just blown away. I was like, holy shit, I can get behind him. I'm like, I'm ready for him to do Batman now. <laughs> all we gotta do is uh is is work our way up on uh, Timothy Chalamet before Dune. Then uh, I saw that preview. Uh, you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of work to do to even act your way out of a fucking paper bag. Better than Chalamet. You that is so offensively bad. You have no training. You don't <laughs> act. The the acting we actually watched a bunch of your acting last night that you have done. Really? Uh, and tell Did me. you see your audition for Little Women last year? Yes. Okay, thank you. You look like Meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Young <Ow>. Meatloaf. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Bad out of hell. Beatloaf. <laughs> Um, I, I, but I, I got to give it up for, to, to Kenneth Branagh because he was terrifying. He was terrifying in how good he was in this. He plays, I think, yeah, I would assume he's played a Russian before, or I think he was from the, from the Ukraine. I can't remember where he's from in this movie. Um, but he had that sort of like old Russian accent. Yeah. And, but he, you do not want to fuck with Kenneth no. Branagh in this movie. I don't know. He must've got in shape because he, usually he looks like pretty doughy Shakespeare guy. And he really like looked like Dave Batista in this. I think he looked actually he looked stronger than Dave Batista because Dave Batista is a wrestler. Yeah, he has to, that's his his job is to work out. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> professional wrestlers always look like you, know, you can take a pin and pop their muscles. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying they're not tough. They can beat the shit out of me. And now that one listens to this podcast, they're gonna come after me. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. Kenneth Branagh didn't look like you could pop him. He looked like a solid mass of steel in this movie and his personality to boot. I mean, you did not want to be his wife in this movie. Oh, for sure, man. He was he was menacing. And I, I didn't even know he was in this film. So when I came on screen, I was like, holy shit. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I didn't do much research about the film because any research would only ruin, you know, a movie where you you literally are hanging on every detail, even though you can't. It's frivolous to put all the put all the puzzle pieces together. Uh, the closest film it comes to is probably, I would say, of his, probably Inception, right? Because that one really defied, you know, kind of like logic and reality enough to go, okay, I guess this could be possible, but it's pretty fantastical. You know, this one was more based in, oh, I hope this isn't possible because this is really terrifying an idea if if terrorists can really time travel. Yeah, I th when, after getting, uh, after leaving the theater, I thought, after watching this, that Inception was a watered down version of this. Yeah, yeah but it, it was earlier in his career, so that makes sense. Yeah, I, I wasn't. A, I wasn't the biggest fan of Inception, and uh, I went back and I watched half of it a few days ago, and it was better than I remember it. But it still was. It, it was like a. 
you know, it, it seemed like he was a younger uh, writer director back then, and he also had big star power that he probably had to adhere to at the time too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the different tranche of actors and all that. I, I still I want to go back and and watch Inception. I've always, like that moment uh, memento for me for him is always classics I can watch anytime. I think it's memento. Memento. You memento. It's not moments. It's memento. <laughs> anyway, meme ento. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, ah, oh, man, this is after leaving the theater. I wanted to immediately buy another ticket and go see the next showing in the same seat in the same theater right afterward. Today's episode of the Four Seasons of Film podcast is brought to you by Phil's Coffee. Phil's specializes in handcrafted coffee made one cup at a time. Visit a location today or find them on the web at philscoffee.com. That's Phil's with a Z, coffee.com. Find the beans you're looking for. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing this again in the theater just because, you know, you pick up on a lot of things you're not going to miss that you missed the first time because it's just so visually stunning. Every single scene is, you know, a beautiful golden sunset on the Mediterranean. And then he, he even makes, you know, like uh, like like city. You know, Of course, Dubai is a beautiful city, but there's parts of Dubai on the streets that, you know, are poor and even makes those those street vendors and everything like look like golden hue sexiness. Yeah. You know, it's like everything looks like a Revlon ad. Yeah, the, but in a beautiful way. Oh, of course, yeah. It's the visually st- stunning, and and the thing is, is man, like like the whole time, like you said at the top of the podcast, like don't try to figure out. And I tried my best not to do that during out the whole film, but that's what I love about his films when I watch them. Is that yeah, but you can't do that. You're you're the kind of viewer that I watch with. And you're always the guy who's like, that's going to be this. That was coming up. I knew the person, this, this person's a killer. You sound like Donald Trump in my mind. No, stop. You need to change <laughs> that narrative. Do. You always do. Just, no, <laughs> wrong, right. wrong. I thought it was the best movie of all time. Oh, well, you should hear what I think. You sound like in my mind. <laughs> I do. I, I don't, I don't think you, uh, that yeah, won't pass the censor board on no. this podcast. No, not at all. Um, I thought um, I thought Washington was a little stiff in the movie, though. If I'm going to be honest with you, yeah, it looked like he was uh, trying to keep up on the action. You know, <laughs> He's I, like he was just like, all right, I'm going to be an action star versus. He doesn't have that many credits, so to be acting with a Robert Pattinson or with a Kenneth Branagh in the scenes, it seemed like he was either a little intimidated. Or he just didn't have that much experience because he it felt like he would never break eye contact or take a breath and relax in any scene when all the other actors were taking a breath and 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 walking around. It seemed like he was either stuck in place or stuck like glued to the actor if they were doing a walk uh, like a walk and talk. Yeah, it's a tough position to be in. You're you're helming a Christopher Nolan, you know vehicle right so i'm sure that had something to do with it too in his mind he's just like holy shit i'm the leading man in this i loved him in black klansman you know so it was surprising in this that i thought he that his performance was was the weakest in the film but he still as an i guess if you say as an action star you know he he definitely i can see him doing that from now on yeah for sure he painted his way i mean it's like you look think of like bruce willis you know he was smooth he was Plus he's Denzel's kid, man. I mean, Denzel's like the the smoothest guy in Hollywood. I love, you know, it's Denzel Washington for God's sake. So to be coming off of your dad's coattails like this, and then to come out of the gate and you're in Tenant, you know, in this big of film, like, wow, yeah. <laughs> wow. But they always say that, you know, the whoever you cast is why pe- most people in leads like this, they don't get Oscar nominations. It's the supporting cast that gets all the Oscar nomination. Because he just has to listen to this and swallow this big pill and carry the movie. So it's not like he can do a lot of more work. The other the other supporting characters, they probably have they probably have that feeling where we well, we can really run around this. We're not helming this, so let's have some fun. Yeah, right. So yeah. There is a lot more pressure on on his role as the lead because he's also learning all this information in the movie about time travel and physics and stuff, and everybody else already knows it. Yeah, like so, Robert Pattinson. I think he was like, he had like a double masters in physics in the movie, right? So he's just spouting off all these facts, and then he's like, okay, yeah. Yeah, Washington basically just has to sit there and be silent and be like, man, this is crazy. All right, who do I have to go blow up next? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Um, and then Elizabeth uh, DeBecky was unbelievable in this movie. She's going to play Princess Diana, or already has, in the next season of The Crown, but she was amazing. She's a rising talent for sure. She was tragic. You wanted her to win, you know, and at the same time, you don't know if you can trust her, yeah. but she had this kind of like Bond girl sexiness to her, you know, where it was like almost like femme fatale you thought she was going to be. She's going to really fuck everything up. Um, she was definitely the wild card. You did, like. You, I thought Pattinson was the wild card. I didn't know if you could trust him the whole time. It was a movie about who who's who's really telling the truth and what actually is the truth? 
Yeah, I, I mean, Pattinson doubted. I got had some doubt in his mind, but she was more of the doubt. And then that other, other, uh, like the main army guy that the besides Pattinson when they go on the missions with him, like, the main army guy. Yeah, like he was one of the leaders of the of the blue or red teams. He he went on the. Well, I don't want to get too far ahead. <laughs> but he was like the army. Didn't I tell you not to say that? You say that every week. I said. I, said, I don't want to get too far ahead. Jesus, six years. You don't want to get too far ahead. You're too far ahead by saying that every single week. I don't want to get. You never. Do you even listen to your? Oh, you don't listen to the podcast. I never. Ah, right, 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 right. Never. I don't want to relive it. <laughs> you don't want to relive how awesome you sound. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so if I could figure out the ambiguousness of the actor that you're talking about, that what what did you even say about him? He he was one of the ones that they they split apart from. <laughs> Okay. Just, could you be more specific, please? No, I can't. Why? He was he was like on the mission. He's like the well, he was like the leader of the red team when they went like as on the sniper mission. Okay. It was just him and uh, and Washington. He's like the main general that yeah, they ran into. Yeah, the main army guy, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Was that him? That's who you're talking about, right? Oh shit! I didn't even recognize him in that. I mean, he was Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't take much huh no <laughs> yeah so that's aaron taylor johnson of course from kick ass which i know you're you like that movie and uh, i really liked him in a movie called nocturnal animals a few years ago i thought he was really good in that um but yeah do you know anything about this this person because you're looking at me like i'm crazy no i know him but now i'm just shocked like he was vronsky and anna karenina yeah, does I that know, help i know who he is but i didn't even fucking recognize him in this movie good for him fuck my tips that like pat like pattinson was my favorite part but now he's my second because i didn't even fucking recognize that was him i mean he didn't have that big a performance in it to be a second favorite performance in the movie i mean he was good he fooled he's aaron me. taylor johnson he's always good yeah he fooled you into not recognize who he was, or you're just a moron because you you looked at somebody that was on screen and you said it looked like Joe Pesci and looked like Joe Piscopo the other day. <laughs> Don't tell people. You do this all the time. It's like a talent with you how bad you are with <laughs> looking at people and saying they look like other people. The switchboard sometimes the wires get like crossed. Roseanne Barr looks like Kareem Abdul Jabbar. That has happened before. I mean, it's that bad sometimes. You just—I—I I, I can't even believe you get up and you—you you recognize yourself and you don't scream when you're in the mirror. Like, who is this? Oh, I thought there's somebody, <laughs> somebody behind me. Uh, all right, what you tell me now? It's it, we're come to the magic hour. Ooh. You tell me what Tenet is about, time travel wise. Not like the movie set in this place. This actor who's an FBI agent. You know, like last week. Yeah. And this. Tell me what the movie's about and tell me what the theories and tell me, tell me all that stuff. And yeah, you don't want to ruin it or get too far ahead of yourself. I'm just going to do that every week. I'm just going to mock you openly because you say the same shit every week. And you, that's, that's what sucks. You say the same shit because you don't have anything to say. That is not true. All right. Prove me wrong. All right. Tenet is about an FBI. No, I'm just fucking with you. It's CIA, by the way. Um, I think, but I was crazy. His name, there was no name in it. I didn't figure that out till later. So, so take back your scolding of me because honestly, you're full of shit. The what scolding? Okay. Here. You just corrected me and then you realize, oh yeah, they're right. Didn't actually just say who they were. Yeah. The, um, I apologize. So I, th so the guy found the, the, so the, it's all about. I think it's <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. You know, you know. Here's what it is. The, it's all about the, the, the big main thing. Gasp. <laughs> but here's the, it was the future fi fighting with the past, right? Because what we do in the present affects the future. So we got. Can you just add a man after everything? If we were not on the microphone, I would. The uh, I'm trying to sound smart. Um, Don't man, do that, man. Don't ever do that. <laughs> it, ins it, it it insults smart as a word, a concept. So it's like, and so with the reversal of time in this movie, right? Because the future is so <laughs> God, so, so fucked that, you know, because of what is happening in the present, which is the past to the future, right? I have no clue what you're saying. All right. Let me start over. Perfect. That's just like this movie. So, right. I think the main message of this movie was that, you know, because it's a, a battle between the future and the present or, or the past. <laughs> is that is that it, it, you know how you sound it's right? take, I think it's just an allegory for climate change man they're coming back to kill us so that way we don't kill the planet <laughs> I would just sum it up by saying it's about future terrorism yeah <laughs> see how intelligent that sounded with two words and you just pontificated saying uh and the butt fart and some other words yeah I, I know but that's me for the record you didn't say fart and you just let that go by well, you're the one that keeps mentioning fart jokes on this podcast. That is not true. <laughs> and I told you, and I told you the other day, Fanny and Alexander, 
Ingmar Bergman's <laughs> best film, in my opinion, right now. He has a giant fart joke in that movie, and it's 1980, and it's an Ingmar Bergman film, uh, and it's about death and divorce, and <laughs> and there's a big fart joke in it. So I'm here to tell you, if you want to defend fart jokes, I think they're ridiculous, and they make me laugh so hard all the time, just like everybody else. But I laugh because it, I cannot believe the fart jokes are still in movies. I can't believe they ever were in movies. They're just, I mean, it, like the, how it's like the base level of jokes. What, what if do you're you like, mean? I just can't get a laugh, then just fart. What, people cry, people are going to continue to cry. People fart, people are going to continue to fart. You don't cry for laughter. Well, I mean, you. Yeah, but you, you fart for funny. You don't fart for funny. You <laughs> fart if you are not creative or clever and you just pull down your pants. It's literally like mooning somebody like, hey, guys, look what I'm doing here. Yeah, that's funny. It's the same deal. Why are we talking about farting <laughs> on the Tenet podcast? Because you have nothing else to say about this movie because no. I let you have the microphone and tell me what it's about. I did. And you said, time before, after, we're all people, man. <laughs> all just dust in the wind, man. I mean, you're like a walking poster in a college dorm. <laughs> Thank you. You're the, you're the conversation that never ends from a college dorm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you to definitely take that. create a Saturday Night Live character about you and the way that you talk. Oh yeah, well, I would like that. Do you like the Big Lebowski? I love the Big Lebowski. I, I'm pretty pretty sure you modeled your life after that movie because you it's like you you sound like Jeff Lebowski all the time, except like a really vanilla version that can't pull off or or and you can't stomach white Russians. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear whatever you want to hear? <laughs> yeah. You're uneducated. Yeah, I know. It is seasonably warm today. <laughs> oh, All right, let's get back to Octon Tenet. Oh, yeah. Let's no. stop talking about me. This okay. isn't about me. I, I already told you that the movie's about future terrorism, and uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly because it was my first foray back into the theater, <laughs> and also for all the reasons thus stated. It didn't overstay its welcome, and I didn't take it too seriously. Because, but there are many people that have. I remember getting into maybe a 45 minute, hour long discussion with someone about Inception. And really, the discussion was me just listening to him talk about how many levels of that movie I didn't understand because I didn't look at it like it was a serious, thought provoking movie like he did. Uh -huh. And so I let him talk for 45 minutes to an hour. And really, it was like, it's like when somebody sees a conspiracy theory when there's obviously no conspiracy theory. It's like room 237. There's no there there. You're just inventing things that, you know, it's it's kind of like even Nolan wouldn't come up with this shit. Yeah, it's, it's just like that Kubrick documentary gotcha. about The Shining. It's like, well, that that's kind of a stretch that every single scene you're seeing something when I'm pretty sure Kubrick just put a coffee can down. Yeah, yeah. I, but I don't know. I feel like this movie... This movie, this is like he's fine. Like you could do that for this because of just how crazy it is. I mean, Man. maybe I have to watch it again, and then it's gonna be like, oh, since I know what happens now, and I can that's that pressure is relieved off my brain. I'll be like, oh, maybe I see it now after the second viewing. But I, I think it's the same. I think it's the same as Inception. I think there are there's definitely you can go into a deep dive with it to a certain point. But to say it's it's every single notion is an allegory for something bigger, I don't think so. I think it it. At, at the same time, it is very complicated. I think it's pretty simple in it. And if if you do break down the physics of what's going on, it's pretty surface level. Yeah. No, don't say yeah. You just said you, you disagree. Well, I mean, yeah. It's, you just tune out when I talk and then you're like, okay, you're done? Yeah. So anyway, moving on. No, no. I was. Th well, what I was if just, I did that with you? You do that all the time. I know. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I... But see, like... And it's been. But wait, was that forty-five minute conversation with me or someone else? Definitely not with you. I've never even had a forty-five minute conversation <laughs> with you. The longest we've ever talked is on the podcast. Okay. Well, I mean, see, you're, you can you go deep to a point. I agree with that, but I think it's this one's deeper than Inception. I think you're hoping that it that it's deeper, and I think it is deeper than Inception. But uh, to say this one is going to be analyzed, you know, in the great ether of, you know, Harvard University someday, I think visually for sure. Um, but I don't think for the merits of the screenplay being a, an allegory again for for its time and its physics beyond what you see after your first viewing of it. But I also would like to see it again because there's there's probably like like all like take a movie like Shutter Island. When you go back to see that for the second time, knowing what has happened, you're going to have fun connecting the dots where you you see them happening because you know what's going on. It, yeah. it makes the movie fun every time you watch it. And that's what people should 
be getting out of the Avengers movies and not just Hulk smash. Here it comes again. Yeah, no, I get that. I like. I look for the. I look for all the. Although I like the Hulk smash too, and I laughed the first time he did it to 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 Loki in the the first Avengers movie. Yeah. Or as Andy Andy calls it uh, Avengers One. Yeah, Avengers One, man. Mm. <laughs> um, Let me. Do you believe that time travel is possible? No, I don't. Because I'm an adult. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> Just like I'm not going to get a Halloween costume in a couple weeks, like you will, and sit at a virtual party. No, I don't have any virtual parties to go to. But you do have the costume. <laughs> yeah, of course I do. Yeah, you always have a sheet. <laughs> the uh, you know, I see. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's possible. But see, like you know, science. Science sometimes says maybe. Yeah, but if you don't know science, like I know you don't. You never studied science, like you never have. You cheated in all your physics finals. I mean, I don't understand how you can say one thing is possible that you don't know anything about. I cheated in chemistry, not physics, man. What's the difference? You cheated. Um, that's that's the thing. You you can't say it's not possible if you never studied it. I, I did, yeah. yeah I've never, st- well, I'm going to start studying time travel. Fuck movies. <laughs> I'm going to be a scientist. No, I'm just kidding. Please, does that mean you're quitting and it's just me on no, this podcast? Me? Cu- I would never let that happen to you. God, one day. All I want for Christmas. Yeah. Well, I see, but I, I just want, I just want to go back and watch this movie. That's what, it, and that's my favorite thing. It's like, I have, I mean, yeah, part of it was going to the theater and seeing the movie. I enjoyed that. Um, but I don't know, man. It's been a long time since a movie that I was like, you know what? I want to watch that again right now. Yeah, I definitely want to see it again, too. But um, (laughs) I think it is a lot. uh, I think it's designed for people like you to want to go back and watch it for all the cool ideas and to make you feel smarter. That's not meant to be uh, condescending, Um, snob. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But it was. But (laughs) yeah, yeah, it's a compliment salt. But I think that's that's why his movies are so good, except for Dunkirk, which is just pretty much a straightforward, great, fantastic movie. Um, it doesn't have a lot of, oh, my God, look at all the cool fucking conspiracies in this movie. But people like that. The mass the masses like conspiracy theories and movies that seem smarter than they are because it empowers them to feel smart and then go back and keep dissecting and then feel smart like like they are the professor when, you know, kind of the professors are looking at it and going like, the physicists are looking at the movie and going like, that's cute, Chris. I see what you're doing here. You know, it's not really, you know, it's not really the way it works, but it's a great Hollywood way of what, the way you think it works. Yeah. No, I, I understand that. I understand. So what that. I'm saying is, you're a moron. I'm not, oh, okay. You could have just saved me the fucking ear hustle of a minute. I think um, I think you like piggybacking off of other people's intelligence, and that's why we have this show. No, Thank that you. is not true. Good night. That is not true. I have my own intelligence. <laughs> I know we're just waiting. But no, to, yeah, it's I, just leaking out of your ear right now. It's not so much it, whether or not the the science is correct or not. It's the science of the universe in the movie. Like picking up the clues. Yes, it makes you feel like you know what this movie is talking about. It's just like a song. If you know every single note of a song, it's just like learning every single note of the song. Could you still just play the chords and play CGA or whatever? I see no correlation in the two. Like, like, uh, knowing physics and time travel is not like knowing every note of a song. Of course, it's of course not, man. It's, Will you stop it's, disagreeing it's, with it's, yourself? It's not to scale. It's not to scale, but it's the same. How, how does how does one even talk to you? Every time I disagree with your point and I tell you why, you agree with me. <laughs> it's like why do you even say a why do you why do you even have an opinion? I'm just disarming you right now, and then you're I'm not disarming back, anything. I'm coming you're, back over the top. You're with the, empowering me to prove you wrong, and when I do, you. You go, oh, yeah, I didn't see it that way. Okay, cool. Next point. So by the time you're done with a podcast, you come in with an agenda and you leave with my agenda. No, not all the time. You're like Nancy Pelosi. You just rip that up. (laughs) And and as soon as you get out of the the podcast studio, (laughs) you're like, yeah, okay. I agree with everything you said. Little baby gets his bottle. But I still like the movie the way I like the movie. I can't argue. So stop agreeing with me. Um, You don't even, just don't answer me. I just agreed with the fact that, yeah, this movie is is in fucking a science fucking textbook. It's not going to be factual. You placate me on my opinions. And then when your opinions are proved wrong, you agree with me. That was I was just saying science is science. This is movies. Right? I'm talking about the philosophy of your life. I'm not talking about this movie anymore. Oh, okay. Let's well, turn the microphones off. Oh man. You want to go back in time and the you know future terrorist this episode? Yeah, of course. It'll be coming right through the window right so now. So here's a question I have for the, the movie. It's not just the bullets can go back and forth to through time, right? It's everything. Anything, yeah. Yeah. Anything that's matter. 
But it starts out as the bullets. Yeah, because bullets kill people. <laughs> That's not why. <laughs> God, I hate you. You are the worst, Burr. Hey. All right, so uh, movie theaters opening back up. Of course, wear your mask. Go see Tenet in theater on the biggest screen you can. And uh, you would not be disappointed. It will, for some of you, make you feel intelligent. It will, for others of you, feel like you've seen a beautiful visual movie with some really cool ideas. And then there'll be those of you like Andy here who doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. But I had a good time. I think he crapped his pants on purpose during this movie. That's his idea of a Friday night. Thank you very much, uh, Andy. It's been a pleasure-ish talking to you. Question mark, question mark, exclamation point, exclamation point. And uh, I guess I will talk to you next week if you're so lucky. Yeah, I always have a great time, man. I don't. Oh, you make me sad. Yeah, you do. You just don't want to let me know. Keep film alive.